So I was perusing Reddit the other day, and I happened upon somebody asking for help with tactics. So I thought that I would attempt to help them. And I've enlisted some help for myself, because it, it makes sense, trust me. I've brought in Tom, who has also won a streamer showdown title. I've won two, of course, Tom, but you have won one as well, so you're pretty good at tactics. Can you confirm or deny this? I can, well, based on my recent showdown appearances, deny yes, it. Yes, what, I... what he said is yes. He... <laughs> He said yes, and he, so we are going to help some people that were looking for help on the Reddit right now with tactics. Number one, tap gameplay one to one. Thoughts on this tactic? Just want to know the main flaws that I should fix. I'm predicted to finish 12th after joining midseason if it helps. The tactic is a pretty classic 4-2-3-1. We both have it in front of us now. It's attacking. And something that always just bothers me, even though it can be very effective and people like Clates do this, 45 instructions on the left side. What do you make? of this tactic on first glance. Yeah, I see the 45 instructions on the left-hand side and I think it's just far too many. Like, I just feel like there's too much going on there and the players are gonna get so confused. The next sort of thing that I don't like about it is everyone above the midfield is on attacking duty. I feel like it's like, it's balls to the wall, right? I feel like mm. it's too much. It, it is, I think that's a trap that you can fall into. And look, it can work. I think what I, we need to say at the top of this video is basically anything can work in Football Manager if you get the right personnel for it and you're able to balance it out based off your opponent. But something that bothers me too is when you have everybody on attack, because you don't need everybody on attack. Somebody's got to get back and somebody's not going to be rampaging into the box at a moment's notice. And there, there probably needs to be a little bit more balance. I would say one of the inside forwards on support, at least. I like the midfield composition, ball winner, box to box, but one of the infield, uh, inside forwards on support. Definitely. I've just noticed as well, in transition, uh, we've got to roll it out. <laughs> I was gonna, I, I the, saw this. <laughs> distribute the playmaker. You're rolling it to your attacking midfielder. That's not quite gonna work, I don't <laughs> that, think. That is, it's contradictory. Like I saw that, I was gonna bring it up. It's some, I, yeah, I'm saving face here. You're the one that pointed it out. Yes, they're rolling it out to the playmaker, who's the advanced playmaker which is an AP on attack in the attacking midfield spot. That's a long roll. I mean, I don't know what keeper he's got. We've not seen the players on there. Maybe he's got, <laughs> you know, 21 rolling. You never know, but you know. You ever, have you ever seen that video of that keeper that can throw it the whole length of the field or just like, uh, that's who he has. He's got that guy. Oh no, it's uh, the Iranian national team keeper. That's the guy. He has ridiculous long throws. Anybody else well, is it, screwed. It's 2027, nearly 2028 in this save. So I think it's likely. <laughs> it's likely he's made it to, uh, I don't know who we're managing here. I we have like no indication be... at all. We're in the prim. That's why yeah, I don't I know. It could who be Tottenham, are. potentially. Is that Tottenham's that. badge before you get like a badge back in? Potentially, or it could be Everton. I don't know. <laughs> Close enough. All right, your lines are very high. Uh, your lines are very far apart, which is interesting and definitely can open up a lot of space, especially because your front line is so attacking. So try and give yourself a bit more fluidity, especially if you want a much higher line of engagement and maybe not roll out to your playmaker. We're going to the next person now. Salt teasers. I, I think it's sal salty sirs. I hope it's salty sirs. 06. Help, no league goals in five, winless since opening day and struggling in the league. What am I doing wrong? So, Tom, what is wrong with this 4-3-3? Well, f for me, it's the opposite of the last guy. This time, we've not got enough attacking roles in there. Oh, absolutely. Th th there's not enough support for Gabriel Jesus there. I think everyone is just, everyone's so far back. Like, it's, there's no one there to help him out. Every single level is more defensive than average, right? You have an anchor man at defensive midfield. Both of your fullbacks are fullbacks on support, which I don't hate that on one, but both is hard to get away with. You have a center mid on support and an advanced playmaker on support, which is average. You have two, not inside forwards, inverted wingers on support, and then an advanced forward who I do think is completely isolated running around. And mentality is balanced. So if you're not scoring, you've got to be more aggressive than this. Especially, like, Hector Bellerin is a wing. He could totally play right wing back, no problem. But we're on fullback and support here. That's It's an interesting take. Massively, and I think as well, because it's so defensive, it's just inviting pressure constantly as well. Just constant, especially if it's higher lines everywhere. Yeah, it's a contrast the, the there. Your, your lines yeah, the, are high, but you're not aggressive at all. And it's just inviting, I assume, balls over the top. It's inviting the holes to be exploited. And then there's just so much space behind the defense that the other team are going to get in there easily. Yeah, you're not, you, so you're getting yourself up the field, but you're not really meeting them there. You're even forcing the opposition inside, which is something you really only want to do in very specific situations with specific tactics. I don't think it's a good approach for a very general tactic like a 4-3-3.
personally. Yeah, I completely agree with that one. I've never had success with it. Uh, yeah, I, and I have me I've messed around with it. I've dabbled. I, I like to dabble and then fail. And I definitely dabbled and failed with that. It, you need to be more aggressive, especially since we can see your arsenal and we know that you have the talent to be a top six, top five team in the league. Have to be more aggressive. You need at least three people on attack, probably one in midfield, one on the wing. You need wingbacks on support instead of fullbacks on support. Life will be good. On to the third one. We have probably the best name here, Snaxodon. This is my first save and second season, and I'm struggling a lot in the prem. Any suggestions? Well, I, I hope we're going to have a few. And per, uh, I almost said per chance, but I'll be honest, I don't know what that word means at, at all. Per your opinion, Tomothy, what is wrong uh, with this tactic at, at Tottenham, which to be honest, is the club that you feel like you'd be struggling at here? What I think I'm seeing is I'm seeing too many players in the exact same area of the field. Yes. I'm seeing Ali in the middle is at Trek Batista, who's doing basically the same thing as both playmakers behind him. Van Allen's yeah. going to be a little bit further back, but almost going to be in the same position as Ali. And then you've got the inside forwards who are going to try and get in the exact same position as Ali and Olmo as well. So I think there's just too many people in one area and it's, it's just not going to work out. You, you know what I'll, I'll say? I'm going to word this a different way. There is no structural integrity in the midfield. There is none. It. You've got I two, you have three players that are looking to float and get on the ball. Even if you had a deep lying playmaker on defend, at least that's hold position as a player instruction. Deep lying playmaker on support isn't this positionally disciplined. So you've got a Trek Artista whose whole job is to just wander around. You have an advanced playmaker who will seek the ball out and a deep lying playmaker who's going to seek the ball out. So there's no box to, I mean, box to box doesn't necessarily offer structural integrity, but it does offer somebody that can fill spaces that need to be filled and isn't going to seek the ball and run into other people. You need somebody that's not going to get in the way. I don't care if it's a Carlero, somebody that is a ball winner, somebody that is a center mid on support for crying out loud and is just there and you know is going to be there. You need somebody like that. And you see in a lot of successful tactics, like, oh, look at the, like the FN base tactic testers, a great place to just see a bunch of tactics that work in the same place you'll see those midfields none of them look like this and that's because they don't this has no positional discipline and that is probably hard to diagnose when you're watching the match because i can imagine you're just sitting there like oh why are they over there you know like <laughs> you're just sitting there baffled like why your defense is always out of position i've also noticed as well uh this is obviously like a, a tactic before a game and already waste time sometimes is on there never have Ooh. that on unless never have it on oh, unless you're playing in the like, final five ten minutes of a game right yeah yeah or unless you're you're playing against man city and you are lincoln yes <laughs> yeah well yeah, no, then you would, would start, win that easily yeah well but man city would want to have waste time on right yeah that's what i mean yeah yeah any final Definitely. tips for snack of what was, what was <laughs> well basically i think this whole this whole formation is one big snack accident that's what i think of it really <laughs> um but i also don't like the no nonsense center back i feel like particularly mm. in the premier league that's just not necessary yeah. The players are, are good enough. The players are good enough to to it to at least be a central defender if they're in this league. They are. Massive. They have the prerequisite requirement. And tighter marking is tough. Tighter marking is definitely tough in your center backs when you've got an attacking fullback out there. Onwards and upwards, lads! We have Freligarter. Tactic for my perfect Rota JC season I posted a few days ago. People were asking for it, so thought I'd throw it here too. So this is instead of asking for help, this is a tactic that produced a perfect season. So I'm going to flip this question on you. Why did it produce a perfect season? Because it's just simple. Like, look at look on my left hand side. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight instructions mm. there. Like, keep it simple. Keep it simple. That's what's going to work. Just keep the fundamentals well and it's going to do fantastic stuff for you they're also playing asymmetrical and that seems to work really well in the match engine right it seems to just exploit the spaces in between defensive lines on the opposition because you never see the ai play asymmetric tactics and it does seem to find a way to sort of get through those lines a little bit disrupt play so i think asymmetrical is a really good way to go uh, you mentioned balance and i with, i think what's beautiful here is the way the midfield is set up you have a deep line playmaker on defend on the right side which counterbalances a fullback on attack right so you have your attacking fullback on the like the right side's more aggressive but then you have your more deep lying midfielder on that side to kind of counterbalance it with the uh, the left side you can have a box to box guy because your wingers on support your fullbacks on support you're less aggressive over there you don't have that second striker 
And I think the reason asymmetrical works so well is the same reason everybody started using the 4231 like 10 years ago in real life. Or it was more than that. It was like 15, 20 years ago, whatever. They started using that because everybody was playing 442. Well, all of a sudden, if you play a 4231, the defenders just don't know how to react to that. And asymmetrical can always create those situations where you haven't seen this before, right? You've got a central striker and then like a wide striker and then a winger who's feeding both of them the ball. The Trek Artista eats up the rest of the space and everything's solid. Like you're creating varied runs and also the argument for keeping it simple lelujo's won the most streamer showdowns and while he makes tweaks to them he generally uses most of the presets that come with the game and none of those tactics have a lot of instructions in them that's all the evidence you should need that really one of the best ways to win in this game is efficient simplicity wow that sounded way too smart for me and the thing is as well like the, the game wants you to do well so you keep playing the game and keep buying the game in future so the presets are always going to be pretty decent obviously you can use the wrong one in the wrong situation which is why sometimes yeah. they don't work out but for the general gist of it if you just want to have a a nice starting block the presets are so so good yeah. just just build your team around something that's balanced like this and get good players and you're gonna have a really good time <laughs> life will be good i'm the final one legendary not spelled the way that you would expect. Any tips on how I can play more defensively with this tactic? Something I can use against bigger teams in the league? This is probably my favorite question to try and answer because <laughs> I just pulled the tactic. I'm sorry. The answer is a little obvious, isn't it? I think the answer is very obvious. There's, uh, there's quite a big hole in the middle of the pitch, right? <laughs> Look, this tactic is probably really fun and probably stomps teams that you're better than, but that red on the heat map in the middle means there really is nobody there. So once a team gets by your front four, it is a field day, Thomas. And this is just, obviously we can see a big hole here just on the general tactics screen. If you got up the average positions uh, analytics screen that you can find in game, I imagine that's even bigger because look at the attacking duties they're all on. A shadow strike is gonna be next to Chambers. The inverted wingers are gonna be very close inside actually, aren't they, to be fair, very far up the pitch. There's just this massive gaping hole in the middle this is literally the definition of we are being overrun in the midfield. This is when when we are being overrun in the midfield started. This is what they were supposed to be talking about, right? Like this exactly. is exactly what they were supposed to be talking about. So I feel like the issue here is exacerbated by the fact that they're using a much higher line of engagement, a standard back line. So not only tactically are your two teams essentially very far apart, your lines are pushing them even further apart. So once a team passes their way through your front four, I mean, it's however many players they want to get forward against your six. And that is just, it's going to be a problem. Now you're going to be able to hit them pretty efficiently on the counter, but it puts a massive amount of pressure on those back six guys. And it really doesn't help that none of them are really able to get forward when you're in sustained possession either they're kind of limited in helping you out going forward what i do actually really like about this is that they have the training ratings on the player list like next to the players i've never seen that before that's actually such a good idea to have the training ratings there so i'll take something from this huh. i mean i won't use this formation wow. for rubbish, but i like the training ratings. <laughs> look well we're, we're not we're not here to just say the tactic is bad so what would you do to to improve it I, other than the fact the training ratings are really cool to have right there yeah training ratings are great i'd i'd stick to those That's i'd probably really put uh, cool. dennis on the pitch because he's on an 8.4 training rating he's been doing yeah, well get dennis fair. and patafta's a great name it's a great name to be fair but obviously you'd bridge that gap in midfield a little bit i'd bring the cdms to to play a bit further forward in the midfield maybe have a box to boxer and, and a ball win midfielder I'd, I'd maybe bring one of the inverted wingers to be on support. Maybe you need a shadow striker and a pressing forward together. That can work quite nicely. Uh, I'd experiment a little bit with the rolls. Uh, I'd also maybe go off much higher tempo as well. High tempo works quite well, but particularly when you've got these big gaps in the team right now as well. <sighs> say say that well, they're distributing quickly, right? Taking shorter kicks. So they're very quickly getting a high tempo in the back line, high tempo to the CDMs, and then there's this big gap. That's going to slow things down massively as well. That's going to be counterproductive. So having that more bridge um. uh, in the midfield as well is going to help. I think they're hurting usually. themselves if you want to play this way with much shorter passing because really the way you're going to be effective is very quickly getting the ball up to that front four before the other team can react because you don't create a lot of unique runs with sustained possession. Fullbacks and support are not rambunctious. Defensive mids and support are not rambunctious. Maybe if you had like a segundo volante or something that would get further up the field. But if you have a shadow striker, you really can't just have two defensive midfielders. It might feel counterintuitive to move them forward to make you better at defense. But if you set one of them as a ball winner on defend and one of them as a box to box, I guarantee you have just more success.
and do the stuff that Tom said as well. I feel like a good Samaritan that has helped out the world today, Tom. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel good. I feel I feel like we've we've done something good for the world. I feel like I've given something <laughs> back. I feel like I can go to sleep tonight with a smile on my face, then that someone out there has been helped. Absolutely. And we may just do this again, but Tom, thanks for joining me. If you do not know who Tom is, how dare you? His links are all down in the description. Please check out his channel. He is a very cool football manager YouTuber as well. And if you're on your way down and you haven't subscribed to this channel either, I will give you personally, hand deliver a free cookie if you subscribe. So check that out. I'm, I'm doing it now. I'm subscribing now. <laughs> I want a cookie, please. All right. Free cookies for everybody. Uh, <laughs> if you already subscribed, I'm sorry, I guess. I owe you a cookie. Is that... That sounds right. No, it's, it's new offers only. New offers only. It's like uh, it's like phone insurance or oh. phone contracts. And it's like, oh, we can, only, we can only give these great deals to new customers. So if you're already here, sorry. Wait until you see what I'm offering next week to subscribe to the channel. But in the meantime, you can watch this video of another good friend of mine, Dr. Benji and I, rating Wonder Kids. If you just want to keep the good times rolling. I'll see you around. Bye.